This is KSN News 3 at 5. We are tracking breaking news at this hour. A massive fire response near downtown Wichita. This is a live look at Central, just west of I-135. Thick black smoke was pouring out of Biker's Edge Power Sports uh, about an hour ago, but a battalion chief tells us the fire uh, was contained to a small location. He says the fire is now under control. Nobody hurt here. Investigators still looking into the cause. If you are driving in that area, heads up because Central between Cleveland and Wabash is closed. Our other top story tonight, that snow is long gone, but the brunt of the storm is still being felt across the state. More than 10,000 uh, Evergy customers still do not have power tonight. That's down considerably from the more than 70,000 that did not have electricity at one point. Several power providers say the outages were caused by high winds. Wheatland Electric, which services 14 Kansas counties, had three poles down today. With the significant storm that we had, we actually feel pretty fortunate with the damage that we have um, as we've had the ability to patrol our lines. Dozens of Kansans are staying warm in shelters, but for many, that is not an option. Some counties say they tried to set up places to stay, but couldn't staff them because people were snowed in. Others can only staff shelters during the day. In Garden City, more than 60 people were put up in motels Monday night so they could stay warm. If you do need help tonight, call your county's emergency manager. Eastbound I-70 open from the Colorado state line to Missouri. However, westbound lanes are still shut down between Oakley and Hayes. State troopers say cars are trying to get on the interstate, which is causing problems for crews trying to clear snow and stuck cars. A majority of highways throughout the state are either completely or partially covered in snow and ice. And some of you are asking why the National Guard was not called in to rescue people stranded. The governor did issue a state of emergency declaration, which helps resources uh, to help the counties. And Adjutant General is their spokesperson says that counties must use all of their resources as well as resources from neighboring mutual aid counties before asking the state for help. Then it is up to the Kansas Division of Emergency Management to decide if the National Guard will be deployed. The spokeswoman says National Guard assistance was never requested for this storm. And that storm causing many people to need a lift. KSN's Derek Lytle joins us live with details on what you can expect if your car uh, needs a tow. Derek. Jeff, I spoke with someone from Salina Record Towing Company who says it's been a busy 24 hours. They're tow truck drivers responding to calls for semi trucks and cars that are stuck nonstop since the storm came in. A rep from the company says that most of the vehicles they respond to have been abandoned and the owner was able to make it to safety for the night. Salina Record Towing will be out on the roads helping reunite individuals with their cars throughout Tuesday evening. These guys have been out here like crazy just pulling semis out and cars out, just trying to get people back on the road. And I mean, they're out there right now going like crazy. So it's it's been wild, needless to say. Now, she says if you dial in right now, the wait time to get a response from them is about an hour and a half. I also talked to some tow truck companies in Garden City who say you can expect to wait about three and a half hours. Here for you in downtown Wichita, Derek Lytle, KSN News 3. Derek, thank you. And state troopers helped hundreds of people across the state Monday into this morning. In the last 24 hours in South Central Kansas alone, troopers responded to 57 calls for service, worked 33 non-injury and one injury crash, and checked on 30 abandoned vehicles. The snow not only wreaked havoc for cars, trucks, and semis, but also emergency vehicles. The Scott County emergency manager says several first responders got stuck during the storm. He says they worked to pull each other out so they could help other drivers. Throughout the day, uh, even as early as the morning hours, we were already working some slide offs in the county, um, working on rescuing some stranded travelers. And, uh, you know, it, it just progressively got worse throughout the day. He says dispatch estimates 40 slide offs happened in Scott County. The National Weather Service shows the area received more than 14 inches of snow. Well, that blizzard also put a stop to deliveries. Case and Zena Taher spoke with a group of FedEx drivers who got stuck in the snow in Dodge City. 
Jeff, Julia, that group of drivers was able to make it back to their workplace today after the roads got plowed and conditions were a little better outside, but they say deliveries could still be tricky today given all the ice. They got caught in whiteout blizzard conditions on their way back from Great Bend. One driver tells me they got stuck not too far from their station here in Dodge City. We had some um, some people from around town. They had made a post on Facebook talking about we're available to come help get people out. Well, they contacted our boss. Our boss contacted them. Our boss told them where we were at and. They came out and rescued us. Jeremy Hallman was stuck for two hours. He says other drivers were stuck as long as four hours. Now, there are still some cars stuck on the side of this road that runs right next to the cargo plant on the east side of town. And those cars are from workers who had to spend the night in the plant. We'll have more on that coming up at 6 here for you, Zena Taher, KSN News 3. Thank you, Zena. As Zena briefly mentioned there, the storm stranded dozens of Southwest Kansas meatpacking plant employees at work. This photo right here, this shows people walking in the snow. This picture was taken outside Tyson in Holcomb on Monday. A Tyson spokesperson released a statement today. It says, quote, team members were given the option of sheltering in place at the plant Monday night where they were provided a hot meal and hot beverages. They say the workers were able to leave this morning. Now, it was a, a similar story at Cargill in Dodge City. A spokesperson says 50 out of 2,800 employees stayed at the plant because of the road closures. They say half of the plant has power. That snow is over. Chief Meteorologist Lisa Teachman joins us now. And Lisa, how much snow has fallen? Scott City definitely takes the cake. We're talking about 14.2 inches of snow. Monument up to a foot. Also near Grainfield at 11.5 inches of snow. Colby at 9. Lions reported and recorded by our own meteorologist Lucy Dahl of 8.5 inches of snow. Hutchinson just under 8. Goddard at 3.2. And officially at Wichita, Eisenhower National, 3 inches of snow will be added to our seasonal mix. As you look over toward northern and also western Kansas, deeper shades of blue over to the purple. That is where you are going to have the highest snowfall accumulations with a lot less across the southeastern part of this state. And the snow is going to be stubborn to melt. We get one day tomorrow before temperatures drop. That's because Arctic air is on the way. How much temperatures will drop by Friday? How long this blast is of much colder air? That bitter air is going to last. We'll take a look at that all coming up in your storm track for your forecast in just a few minutes. Back over to you. All right, Lisa, thank you. Other news now. The dirt racing track at the Kansas State Fair lives another year. The fair board unanimously voted not to demolish it. And for many, the track was more than part of the Kansas State Fair. It was part of the community. It's really part of Hutch's history. I mean, they've been running the Hutch Nationals there for so long, and the facility's been there for so long, and they've always ran that event third weekend in July. This year, the fair will contract with Mel Hamilton Ford for races. A rushed campaign finance ordinance may be reversed in Wichita. Council member Dalton Glasscock says he's concerned about how the ordinance came to be. It bans corporations and LLCs from donating to city political campaigns. The ordinance passed on emergency action last week, and that means it took effect immediately. Glasscock does not think it was handled correctly. Out of principle, um, we currently have an ethics policy uh, that addresses these, protects these, um, and that were seven officials out of the entire state um, that are held to um, different um, contribution limits. City staff are working on an amendment to revert the ordinance back to its original form. Council members are voting on it next week. Governor Lori Kelly will uh, further lay out her goals for the year in her State of the State address tomorrow. Her speech to uh, senators and representatives begins at 6 p.m. A Wichita man is spending nearly two decades in prison for the overdose death of his toddler. Calvin Vick pleaded guilty to three crimes, including distribution that caused death. An autopsy showed his 22-month-old son died after ingesting fentanyl and meth in 2022. Coming up on KSN News at 5, the U.S. trying to convince Israel to scale back its war in Gaza, the latest push from the Secretary of State. Plus, after nearly a decade, Habitat for Humanity has hit a huge milestone.